you got to admit when your when your outcome is they take all your cars and arrest you and put you in prison and railroad you in some weird weird third world communist uh, gulag. If all your decisions got you to there, how good were your decisions, right? Hey, speaking of which, I, 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 me, me, me. Frame, you got to explain your entire life from your own perspective. So I'll use a good example. Girls nights outs, right? Girls like, hey, my girls want to go to Vegas. My divorced friends and unhooker ho friends want to go to Vegas and they want to take you with them. Is that okay? Is that cool? A guy without frame was like, you're not going there to those horrors. I don't want you cheating on me with blah, blah, blah. And he has a big fight. And then she's like, you can't tell me what to do. Goes down there, fucks Tyrone, comes back. You guys pretend it didn't happen. And then you realize, oh, my baby's got really curly hair. Alternatively, a guy with frame. I don't really, I don't date girls that go out to Vegas like that. Like, I don't do that. I don't, I don't put up with that stuff. And that's it. You let it lie. Because you understand intuitively that you can't tell people what to do. You can't overtly manipulate people into loving you or wanting to take care of you or wanting to avoid like the impression of impropriety, right? You can't, you can't convince anybody of that. You have, you don't have the power. You don't have hard power. What you do have power though is over yourself. So when you say, ah, I'm not into that kind of thing. I don't usually put up with that. There's no threat. It's just saying it's letting her know you do what you want. Having said that, if you go there and you do this thing, with these friends that I know aren't good for you, then just be aware that the cost of that is me. The only thing you have to enforce your boundaries are three things. You have your attention, you have your affection, and you have your commitment. You can't use the stick anymore. The rule of thumb has been long gone. Guys aren't allowed to be violent. It's illegal. And, you know, heaven forbid we civilize ourselves, right? So you don't have the stick, so all you can do is remove the carrot. But then that lets you know, well, how much? Well, that's that's where your calibration comes in. I was talking before about getting experience in so you understand what level of response is good. Yeah, so if a girl, you know, bitches you out when you're on the sofa watching TV, you know, maybe pull a little bit of affection. Just, eh, whatever. We're going to ignore her for a couple minutes. Girls love affection and they love validation. So just removing a little bit of that is a nice gentle way of gentling, of moving a gentle boundary. Now, something more serious like this. Yeah, and this is where Rob is right. Attention, affection. He pulls his commitment. Go in a hotel for the night. See you in a weekend. Don't say where you're going. Leave your phone at home. Come back with a smile. She has no idea what went on, right? This is where you find out, you know, this is like, again, girls like validation. They like comfort. They like security. And you're removing all of those things because she crossed a boundary. At the same time, for Jackie, he's like, oh, whatever, laugh it off. Because for him, it's not. So he just kind of rips into her. You know, pulls a little bit of affection, but you'd be a bit, a bit crankier. What's the right answer? Well, that depends. You should have experience and know this for yourself. See what I mean? So once you figure out this stuff, you're able to enforce your boundaries better. But again, it's not, you don't learn it right then and there. You have to learn it over time. And this is why I keep pushing into guys' heads, man. Robert Glover's No More Mr. Nice Guy, Manuel Smith's When I Say No Feel, I Feel Guilty, The First Year of Rational Male. Understand the, the intersexual dynamics, understand assertiveness, understand validation seeking nice guy behavior, get those things out of the way, practical female psychology, understand the ways that men and women are different psychologically, frame, understand what it means for a guy to have frame, how to build it and what to do from the ground up, everything from how you smell, to how you work out, to how you eat, to how you dress, to how you handle your emotions, to how you handle like your intellectual pursuits, all of that stuff, right? And yeah, so how do you fix this? Well, yeah, it's just how do you bake a bake a pie? You, first, you got to make the universe. Anger face, shouting into the void, for no one operates the same way in real life as you don't have anonymity. Doesn't really matter. I'm trying to illustrate a point for you guys. The fact that anonymous guys are speaking their emotions and not their uh, not their real world insecurities doesn't really change the point. If anything, that kind of makes the point. The guys are all tough, but then as soon as you put them in that real situation, they act like the guy who just nervously laughs it off anyway. I've been spraying <laughs> cologne on my wrist like a noob. Oh, yeah, dude, it's a life changer. I know it sounds like such a simple thing, but yeah, just once you do the single spritz, makes all the difference. Couldn't even reshoot or edit the flubbed line. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, so uh, the boundary stuff, right? So then this is, it's kind of leads you to a big question. How important is it to you? 
and you're going to find there's there's three levels of boundaries. There's things that are absolute deal breakers. There's things that are nice to have and you're willing to fight for them. But at the end of the day, if they push hard enough, you're probably going to buckle. And then there's the ones that nice to have, but you're not really to invest. In. And you got to learn those third set are the ones you just laugh it off. And that's why Jack's like, oh, I would just laugh that shit off. That's where that comes. And he's like, that's not the hill I'm choosing to die on. It's up to you. You can do it. Like, heck, I use the example, uh, Zach Small used to be training the brain, used to be the hunter or the family alpha. He was red pilled. I think he joined the same week I joined. So it was pretty cool. Uh, his horrible situation, and I don't mean to, I guess it's kind of public knowledge now. His wife at the time, girlfriend, uh, slept around when they were in base, when he was in basic training, they were just dating. He didn't find out about it till like 10 years in and a couple kids in. So like, what do you do about that? And I noticed everybody was like, oh, call him a cuck and shit like this. And I'm like, dudes, like, what do you expect to have happen? Imagine that scenario. Put yourself in this situation. You're married to a girl. You have two kids. Life's going great. You're doing your thing. But you find out when you guys were first dating and there was no ring or nothing like that, she went out and played the field and had extra dates. And he went out and did what he did. And then he learned, like, is this the hill I want to die on? He's like, no, probably not. So he went out and had his fun. And then they both got over and got through. Not sure if it's the path I would take, but whatever. You can't fault a guy for taking his own path, right? And that's why I like that example. I know he probably hates having it brought up, but I like it because it's it's a great example of you doing you and not giving a shit what other people think. I just wish he would own it to that level. It's like, look, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You may not like it, but that's not your decision to make because you're not the one who has to suffer the consequences or enjoy the successes of my behavior. Jack Murphy, another great example. I raised two kids. I had horrible wife, divorce, all that nonsense. I got through all of that stuff. And now if I want to pass my girl around on OnlyFans or whatever I'm doing, fuck you. Like, I, I don't owe anybody an explanation. I'm going to have fun. I've earned it. Nobody would have said shit. I think it'd be great. Some people would be like, I don't like that lifestyle. I'm like, I'd be sitting here cheerleading that to this day. Well, it's like, you don't get to choose. But instead, he has what Glover calls this toxic shame, where a lot of guys are so shamed of their own uh, masculinity that they actively hide it. And that's where guys, like, they try to be friends with a girl first. They don't try to sleep with her right away because they're afraid of, of being openly sexual. They're embarrassed about their own manhood. Or in that case, he wants to be a degenerate sex perv. And he's like, oh, but they won't like me, so I better not do it. It's like, dude, it's fine. Yeah, Destiny versus Jack Murphy, great example. Personally, I find Destiny's whole, like, shtick when it comes to relationships complete garbage, but whatever. Uh... My only problem with Destiny is that he's given so many of these goofy bread tuber socialist rich ass communists like a platform and made them famous. <laughs> it's mostly just because he has a really horrible taste in friends. But beyond that, like whatever. Yeah, now then there's a two part to this too. So acting your own best interest is good. But there's a difference between acting your own best interest and being self-sabotagingly delusional. Like Anthony Johnson acted in his own self-interest and he absolutely owned it. But what did he do? He tanked his whole brand by like nuking uh, Rolo. At the time, Rolo was working pro bono for him. And I know it's like, it's like four years, man. Let it go. It's like, well, it's a good example. It's the best one I could think of. Um, he basically went from almost broke to making a really good run and a successful business. And all he had to do was stay out of his own way to do it. But instead, he's like, no, I want to be the coolest guy. Rolo's a traitor and kicked him out of the thing. All the guests kind of walked off and started lashing out at everybody. Yeah, he did what he want and he owned it and he owned it 100%, but now he's broke. And he knocked up a chick. But that's the risk you that's the price you have to pay, right? If you want the freedom that comes with frame, comes with like a red-pilled praxeological look on life, then yeah, it comes with risks. And you have to be okay with those risks. You got to be calculated with those risks. And I'm not going to lie. There's some guys that I think absolutely should not watch or consume or learn or practice anything red pill because they're just not capable. Like they'll just nuke their lives. Andrew Tate, great example. For all he was talking, I don't know how much of it was just him and how much of it was him like learning from red pill stuff. But you got to admit when you're when your outcome is they take all your cars and arrest you and put you in prison and railroad you in some weird weird third world communist uh, gulag 
If all your decisions got you to there, how good were your decisions, right? Hey, speaking of which. 79T, 2458, Learning Corp, Little Red Riding Hood, take one. 